it's Game Tech Super Jam back with another video, and in this video I'll be going over Windows 10 Anniversary Update and uh, the new features in it. So right now I'm on build 14.390, which is the most up-to-date build, uh, and here are the new features in it. So first of all, um, Cortana is going to be getting a lot of improvements in the Anniversary Update. Um, in terms of what I can really show you, it now plays music if you've got a Groove Music subscription. Um, in terms of just the way it works, its notifications are going to be better, its toasts will be better. Something I noticed, it actually tracks my package now, um, which is actually really nice. That was surprising. But overall, this has been modified to make it uh, closer to Google Now, just make it smarter overall. Uh, and actually, Google Now just got triggered, but... Um, it's really about making Cortana smarter in everything it does and making it more like Siri and Google now, which I think it's doing. Cortana is getting much, much better uh, in this update, but it's not really one of the bigger features. In addition, I think one of the bigger features, I don't know why they had to wait an entire year to release this, but they did, are extensions. So as you can see right now, I have Adblock Plus installed, uh, but you can get a lot more extensions too just by going to the extensions and getting more extensions uh, from store you can get a bunch of extensions right now there are like 10 um, but once this build is released to uh, it goes through RTM which you're not really calling it RTM but once it uh, is released to the public you're gonna be getting a lot more extensions and they work pretty well the installation process is a bit weird you have to go through the store for some reason I don't know if I like that um, but it works pretty well. Adblock Plus has worked as I expect it to work. Uh, and there are some other improvements in Microsoft Edge, but the main one is going to be extension support, which is pretty nice to see. Uh, next up, we've got a start menu redesign. So, as you can see right here, the... Um, let me just take this out. Of so, as you can see right here, uh, the all, you don't have to click a button to get into all of your apps anymore. It is just going to be right there. Uh, it saves you a click. It's really convenient. I definitely like it. You got your tiles to the right still, and you've got your hamburger menu to open up settings, file explorer, etc. Or you can just click on it from right here, and you can change what appears right here on the left side. I definitely like this redesign. It's a nice improvement. Uh, it reduces a click, and it's it's pretty nice to see that. So next up, uh, we've got a settings redesign. So the settings page has been completely redesigned. Um, it looks way nicer. So as you can see right now, you've got nice icons next to each option, and you can always just go back. Uh, and that they do that throughout the settings app, I guess. Um, and it's it's a pretty nice improvement. I like I like where it's going. And as you probably noticed, settings uh, is dark, and that's because in the theme chooser, there's also a app mode that really affects more than just apps, it affects the entire uh, operating system, but now you can choose between light and dark. This used to be something you could do in command prompt, but now it's official. Uh, so now you can also, I really like this, uh, differentiate between showing color on the taskbar and just on the title bar. I definitely like this. Uh, huge improvement there. So yeah, there's the settings redesign, you've also got a search now up top to search through everything. Uh, in addition, they're adding Linux Bash support, so you can do, it's really more Ubuntu, but you've got uh, Linux's version of Command Prompt built into Windows. I obviously don't really know how to use that, but if you're a developer, that is there, and it is useful. Uh, another feature they're announcing is syncing with your phone, uh, through if you have Cortana installed on your phone, and... It works pretty well most of the time, from what I've seen. Uh, in theory, it should let you respond to texts as well. Uh, that is incredibly buggy right now, and uh, I don't know if they're going to be releasing that. I don't think so. Um, they uh, Microsoft did just release a few weeks ago, actually, that they're not going to be releasing SMS support with this build. I'm not really sure why. It was working pretty well, uh, but they removed that. But you still get notification access, missed calls, new text uh, in the Toast Notification Center right here. Speaking of which, uh, notifications look way better now. So here's the notification I sent from a different email account, and while you still don't have buttons to reply in line or anything that fancy, they look way better than they did in previous builds. It just looks more professional. It's easier to click. Um, I just like the way this looks. It's way better 
than what it was in the previous build and the current up-to-date Windows 10 build for uh, that's going out to cl classic people. Uh, another new feature, Windows Ink. I don't have a touchscreen, so this isn't as useful. It is incredibly useful if you do have a touchscreen, and there are some really handy features even if you don't have a touchscreen, like screen sketch. I actually really like it because you can just immediately take a screenshot and start doodling and maybe like presenting something, and then you can just save it. Um, that's pretty useful. It's incredibly quick too, so it works really well. You've got Sketchpad, of course, just a blank document. You can make a blank document, but it's not blank by default. And then uh, Sticky Notes, which I don't know why it like blurs the background, but I mean it works pretty well. Uh, that that seems a little bit weird to me that you have to close it out before you do anything else, but it works well. It stays on your desktop and it works well, and it's nice to see an update to the old Sticky Note app which is really, really old. It's been there since Windows Vista, so it's nice to see an update. Uh, we've also got Skype improvements, as in a completely new Skype app. So as you know, they went from a Skype Windows 8 app to and a Skype desktop app to a Skype... Uh, they split up Skype into three separate apps, which we still have for some reason. So you still have messaging, phone, and video. And now you have a Skype Universal app, and you still have the desktop app. So I don't know what they're doing with Skype. The app works. It's a nicely designed app. Um, I just have no idea why why it exists. Like, it works, but why is it there? The three apps are there, and now we've got Skype. So we have five Skype apps. Not really sure why we have five of them. Classic Microsoft, not knowing what to do with Skype. Um, and the last improvement I want to go over is the lock screen, which has gotten some pretty nice improvements. So instead of having uh, having you you ha instead of having to use the uh, blue Windows logo, you actually get your lock screen logo blurred in the background, and it's a really nice effect. Um, I definitely like that. And you also have access to Cortana on the lock screen. So overall, um, we've got some really nice improvements in terms of stability. I think just notifications. Uh, mail, calendar, those, just the core apps are working better in this build, I have noticed. Um, stability, it's been stable for me, so if you want to jump onto the Insider Preview, go ahead. Uh, this will be rolling out to people, I believe August 2 is the update uh, day. But um, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Be sure to subscribe for more Windows 10 coverage, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.